So, hello. And since you to be, seem to be kind of sleepy, let's start with something interactive again. Uh, some of you may remember from Spain. The rules are, sim are simple. Uh, you will get three questions about LibreOffice code. If you get the question, if you get your answer right, you get one point. And if you somehow happen to get all three questions right, then you will be the per perfect all-knowing LibreOffice developer, which you probably won't. So, ready? So, um, this is trivial code. I'm just interested if I set up callbacks this way. Uh, this, this is from the LibreOffice View Kit code. If I set up the callbacks this way, which of those callbacks will be called? So, um, uh, I, I will just go first through the questions and we will get the answers afterwards. So, does somebody still need more time? All clear? Oh, come on, say somebody something. No. Huh? No. Oh, okay, so, sorry, if you didn't, if you, if I haven't finished too late. The second question. Um, this is from Calc. You may not be exactly familiar with the functions, so I will actually show you the prototypes. So, and we have this simple questions. Simple question: Which of the, uh, the 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 specific code is kind of made up? It's based on more complex real code. But the question is: Which of these functions will actually modify the compiler instance? Yeah, that should be probably simple, so I guess this is enough time. And the last one, true or false, and just so it's not 50-50, why true or false? Well, that's just one of the problems. It's actually not all the problems there. There are more of them. Does somebody still want more time to think about this? Okay, so... Uh, raise your hands. How many of you... Yeah, let's start from the bottom. How many of you think you have zero correct answers? Okay, I saw a few hands. How many of you hope you have one correct answer? Oh, I'm waiting for the two or three. So two correct answers? Three correct answers? Okay, so how many of you are you too shy to raise your hand? Raise your hand now. I'm still missing like half of the people here. Anyway, so as some of you may know, I repeatedly keep bitching about the code being unreadable. Uh, all of these are actually real examples. I wasted some time on trying to figure out. I have also fixed some of them. Um, so I had a talk in Spain about this. I'm going to have a slightly different one this time because apparently they still can use some repeating. So, yeah, I mean... Um, I think the question about if code readability matters 
it kind of does, especially when we're looking at some code we don't quite understand and we keep cursing and we spend like one day looking at it and so on. Uh, kind of the problem is here that it's not really compulsory, right? If you don't get the syntax right, it just won't compile. The compiler, like, you cannot talk it down, it just won't work. If you get the functionality wrong, it just will crash. I mean, that's not as strict because we have all the bugs about code not being right. But still, that's like sort of required that it works, but like, you can write messy code, and if it gives the right detail, it's sort of optionally, and we don't have the time. But of course, then it adds up, and then we make things worse over time. Uh, it's kind of an investment. If if you waste waste your time today making it better, then you get the time back later. Um, and of course, this is something that spreads because we got a lot of code which is poorly written and that is kind of the compelling to be consistent with the code or just sometimes we don't quite understand so we copy and paste it so the stuff propagates and there are quite many examples which are showing kind of poor practice I even included some examples from the standard library, which also could use some improvement here and, in, here and there. Like, if you have this, this empty example, I guess we all know that it's a check, but let's say it's not STL, or you just don't happen to know. How are you supposed to know from just looking at the code? And you are, for example, looking at the code in Gerrit, which will not give you any hints. How are you supposed to know if it's a check, or if you are actually asking the vector to become empty and you are checking if the operation was successful. So, um, I, I would like to talk about various stuff I have uh, run into, why it's bad and how those could be possibly done better. Hopefully some of that will stick in your minds and if you see some code you will you will, when, when writing your code, you will do better, and if you see old code, hopefully you will feel like maybe improving the stuff a bit, so that the next, well, somebody will have suffered sooner or later, so maybe you will be in the mood, the person to stop the suffering. Um, so, as I said, this stuff is sort of optional, and also the complicated stuff about it, that it's at least to some extent, a matter of taste. Like, you, you can have your personal opinion on the syntax, but if the comp compiler doesn't agree, then you can have uh, your opinion all you want, and it doesn't matter, but like, style, people have different ideas. So I, I don't, I don't really want to call these rules, but they are not really rules. They are more like recommendations, and like, apply your judgment, and this is, some of the things, I, I don't want to also do specific rules because rules like just say, do this, but I would like to also say like, why you should do this stuff. So this is meant to be like a bit more like, more high level and some of the rules should kind of be implied by this. So let's go on some examples. Let's have some of the, oh yeah, this is what, ooh. I was reordering the slides, so I wasn't expecting this one. Um, one of the good reasons why, why I also care about code readability is that actually you spend a lot more time reading the code rather than writing it. Kind of when we are writing the code, we are like focused on writing it and we are lazy, so we kind of have the tendency to make the easing, easing writer, but since we will end up reading it, it a lot more, it will come back to bite us. Um, yeah, I had this example, for example, if you know from base case, the matrix, it just calls its element A, B, C, D, E, F, and the next are hard coded, but if you see code like matrix.e, how many of you know 
if I didn't show you how many of you would know which one is uh, matrix E, which one of the... Yeah, after counting, right. But it's much, it's much simpler if you can read that it's scale X. I'm, I don't care if, maybe this is useful for some cases, but most of the time, if I want to use a matrix yeah, in LibreOffice, I want, to, I want to use it for the usual stuff. I want to scale, yeah, 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 sure. rotate, and translate. No, I, I agree. Like I say, I don't know why someone edits that. Yeah, I mean, so, but... It, it was not in the original code, I know that. <laughs> Okay, so let's see how well you actually scored. So, please... Don't be shy, raise your hand for true. You have 50-50 chance. So, true? No one. Okay, two, th three, true? Okay, so the next is false. Can somebody explain why it's false? Well, it doesn't matter because you're wrong. It's true. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the point of the question. There are three questions. So one of the rules I would like to have is that ideally you should be able to read the code and just get what it does just from reading it. So everybody fr probably look at it as if R1 is inside R2, but that's actually not what the function does you are asking R1 if R2 is inside of it. So it actually does the opposite of what it does. That's one of the tricks was, which was there. Uh, this doesn't exist anymore. I've already fixed it. The function is not called contains. If R1 contains R2, now it's obvious that it's, well, actually it's not obvious because there is other problem. Um, so if you have the number, uh, what do the numbers actually mean? You have four numbers, and you, there are many ways to specify the rectangle. So, um, like the second one, is it 20 pixels wide? Is it maybe 10 pixels wide, even? Um, so this is actually, it's coordinates, it's not with height, it's one point, second point. That's why actually it's true because the second one is inside the first one, because it's coordinates, it's not with. Mm. Again, this can be easily improved. You can, for example, remove the first constructor and just force this one. If you explicitly have to specify the point and the size, then it's obvious. Or we can do, for example, as Skia does. It doesn't allow such constructors. You have to call static, static functions, which use the name. Now you can see, obviously, what the four numbers mean. And this can, this can be applied to more various constructors, which have like a bunch of numbers or a bunch of arguments. So, yeah, another two quick three questions. So, uh, which of the functions modify the object? Let's raise hands for none. Oh, come on, Kailon. You know it's a trick question. Uh, raise hands for all of them. And just three of them. Oh, I, I see I've, I've scared all of you, like nobody's even trying. So the correct answer, answer is all of them. Uh, right now, the, uh, I mean, obviously, again, this is reading. It looks like it's checking what the value is, but this, this code also doesn't exist anymore. Now all the is are replaced by parse. 
because that's what the function actually does. This one tries to parse the value in the string. That's why it modifies it. And this one is const because the result variable, somebody noticed a small problem with the const, so the result is mutable. Yeah, so. Um, again, another important rule which somehow people seem to miss, it should do what it seems to say, what seems to be the logical explanation for the code. So, if it kind of says that is value, it should just check if it is value and not set something. Um, yeah, uh, somebody also apparently did not quite understand what const and immutable mean. Uh, the language says that it, the object doesn't, doesn't change. The way I understand const, it means that for the outside, the object conceptually doesn't matter. If you, for example, have some internal cache, that one can change, but from the outside, the object doesn't change. And for this object, which change without changing, without making a visible outside change, those should be mutable. That's why it was wrong, because it was using mutable for something which was visible from outside. Um, and other expected stuff, we have class for uh, reading bitmaps by pixels. You have function, you, you can access it using scan lines, and somebody tried to be consistent, so if you have things function get pixel, you get the y argument first again. I have got it wrong so many times. And finally, which callbacks get called? Will somebody still raise hand or can it, should we just skip this? Does somebody want us to tell the answer? Uh, I mean, this is normal code, it's in the code base. You all of, you, all of you some, sometimes deal with it. Yeah, it's, it's the last one. It kind of suggests that it registers callbacks, but um, this is kind of, again, more as repeating the same idea. The names sh should actually say what it says. This does not register a callback, it sets a callback. Um, the note below is also sometimes it's kind of confusing. Sometimes people tend to name things differently. For example, this is a, again a matter of taste thing, but I, I personally think function should be called get only if it actually gets the data. Like maybe if it reads it from disk or something. If it's a, if it's a simple accessor, it should not say get because it just does trivial stuff. It matters, for example, for performance because you can see from the function how you can, or rather you can guess how complicated it is. But this is one of the many things which are matter of taste and people will disagree. And I kind of think LibreOffice code base is kind of lost on this one because we have so many get functions which are just one But I wanted to mention it. Um, I have some more examples, like this is kind of the same rule, or rather the same recommendation, just different technical means to get there. Uh, I suggest avoiding very generic term, for example, like calling classes data or whatever. It's generally a bad idea because when somebody will be looking at it, um, what does it actually mean like data? Everything is a data. I also generally don't like use of the auto keyword because if you look at the code, unless it's obvious from the code, what does it mean? Um, you will need to find out what, what like if, like here, what do, what is the type? I personally use auto only for generics, if if they need it, or if the code sometimes make it obvious, like if. If it's the begin and iterators, yeah, okay, it's auto because nobody cares what the actual type is, but sometimes we do. Um, the other section is various like magic, mysterious values, like having, 
there's an example of code from Noel in a variety you can call get get content node, but sometimes you can say false. If you look just at the code, what does the false mean? You, you need to look at the function. So here in the function, you still need to understand what point and mark mean, but those are writer terms. If you actually look at the code, that's easier to remember what point and mark is. You don't need to remember what e, each true or false means. The same VCL has XOR mode, and you, have, you can say true, false, and you can do three combinations of true or false there. And you need to look at what that actually means. Uh, during writing this CAD backend, when I do it internally, I use enum. This is much more, much more readable. You look at it and you see that you won't just invert, which is the same like here, but how many of you know that this is asking just to invert? Uh, and this can apply even to plain booleans. Sometimes it's better to use enum with just two values because it's obvious, like for example, case, case sensitive, yes, no, it's better than true, false, because who knows? Uh, I mean, for common list functions, okay, you can remember it, but if it's not common list, com common list function, it's much better to just see there and read it. And yeah, every programmer tries to be smart sometimes, and we then end up outsmarting other people or even ourselves later. I, I personally remember some cases when I was looking at some code thinking, who was the idiot who wrote this code? And I look at Git log and it was me like five years ago when I was trying to be really clever. So um, uh, I mean, you, you have probably all been in cases when you were struggling with writing code, but I have usually struggled more when trying to read code because it often is harder. So if you try really hard to write something clever, then it will be too clever for you to later read back. So there is this root, uh, rule about keeping s simple and stupid. Uh, these are again real examples. My nice stream operators that kind of write random values because you need to check what the type is. I have even seen assigning to a return from getx. I don't know where I got it from, but I remember it so well that even though I have forgotten the place, I still remember being totally confused by it. Uh. Um, yeah. There were just some examples. Uh, we can have some rules which like Im get implied from is of course these are the theoretic ide I ideals in the reality we sometimes don't have the time there's there's the line or we just don't want, need to do other stuff right now so there, there also as I said it's a matter of taste we need to argue with the other person sometimes it's just not worth it and in reality, nothing is perfect. So whatever API we design, there's going to be some problem. So we need to stop some sometimes. But as I said in the beginning, this is an investment. Uh, your colleagues will think less, less often you're an idiot if you write better code. That sometimes may help. And if you don't really care what your colleagues think of you, you it, it can save you at least the problem of thinking that you yourself are idiot. If you find yourself in Git log, I still remember. Yeah, I still remember that time. Prefer not to, but it happened. And yeah, so if you don't care about us, at least be selfish and think of yourself in a year. It will come back, even to you. And even after all this stuff, this can, it can be difficult to like agree on stuff. Sometimes people have ideas. It looks nice, and then somebody else comes and has a completely different idea. Just when writing, writing this, I ran into an idea which I ran into decently. I would like to comment on how there is theory, and then just somebody comes. Uh, you may have noticed in the last couple of years, people writing like the cons in a kind of strange place, like not const point reference, but point const reference. 
And this is supposedly a good idea, and you can find an explanation that it's more consistent, it has a simpler rule, and probably something else. So people are starting to use it. And I was like, when I first saw it, I was, this is weird, but those are good arguments, but now I don't see it that way. So like, and this is like, I can, like for example, it's not intuitive, unless you happen to like hablar espanol or one of those languages, you, you usually put modifiers first. So you don't, uh, I mean, how, how many of you, how many times have you greeted somebody today by saying morning good? We just, we just don't think like that. It's also really not really consistent because how many people put static somewhere else. And finally, um, this is why sometimes people get, try to have good ideas, but end up, end up with bad ideas because Sometimes the stuff is hard and there's a misogynist thing. I think this, I think this, this better rule about putting const to the right comes from not actually understanding the rules for parsing C declarations, which admittedly is quite a mess. Kernighan and Ritchie, I think, messed up that one, but that's what it is. So one, one rule is if you put const always to the right of the thing, then, it, then you, you always know it applies to the thing on the left. But that I think comes from somebody who doesn't know the rules because the actual rule is there is no rule, just use the exi existing rules. Because if you can read this stuff, you know what's on the left is the value, what's on the right is the pointer. So it applies here as well. This const means that the integer that the pointer points to is const. This const means that the pointer itself in const. No need for have to have extra rule. Um, yeah, I know, this is the last slide, I just wanted. So, this is complicated. We are all, all humans, so we mess up, so uh, we still will, will be handling the code that was written by people 20 years ago. Uh, by the way, I had it on the slide. Uh, I don't know if there is somebody responsible for documentation. While doing this, I noticed that we link to the open office org style guide by saying that it's trusty guide, trusty old guide or somebody like, can somebody please fix it? Like that's old stuff, some of it. Based on those rules, some of the really broken code was written. Can we like link to it by saying, this is for historical rules and maybe we don't need to follow it because if we forever try to be consistent with, with the stuff that was written decades ago, it will keep being a mess. Uh, if you just go to wiki development, it says trusty old open office guidelines, something like that. If you can just, can just have like a jumper page which says these are not our guidelines, that's how the code was written originally, you don't really need to, something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, but this, this is like, this, is, this page is big enough that I just wanted to at least say it publicly without just Maybe somebody has a different opinion on the guidelines. Uh, yeah, it's kind of it. Uh, I hope that this was some of it useful. Kind of, now that I look at it, it sounded a bit like a rant, but I hope some of it has been useful. Maybe like next time you will feel too lazy to write something properly. Maybe like we'll think of this rant and maybe you'll think better of it, hopefully. Well, so I mean, it's been useful. Do we still have time for questions? Well, it's four o'clock, so I'm closer you can come up and get ready for your talk. Well, and in the meantime, if there are any questions. If, I mean, if somebody has stopped being shy and actually has a question, you can ask. What do I have? Questions? Yeah, okay. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs>